Hi friends, David here, and you can probably see today on the Learn Stage Lighting is a little bit different than usual. One, we've got a little bit of extra fan noise from our friend right here. Uh, but two, there's lasers. Let's dive in. One of the things where I think there's a lot of misconceptions in lighting, in entertainment, involves the use of lasers. Okay, the truth is it's never been easier to be able to use lasers in your live show. Now, are lasers dangerous? Yes, like anything in the wrong hands when used carelessly, they can be dangerous. But when used properly, they can be a great part of any event. We're talking stage shows, church services, corporate events, parties. Lasers can work really well for any of these things, uh, but there's just a few things you need to know to get started. So that's what we're covering in this video. We're going to cover how to get started with lasers here in the U.S. especially. Uh, we're going to cover some of the basics of safety, not everything, but some of the basics, the things you really want to know, the important things. Uh, if you've been considering purchasing a laser that you got to know before you buy um, so you can be safe and legal. And, uh, you know, then we're going to go ahead and talk about what kind of fun things you can do and, and how to get control of them because they are different from your average light, which just takes DMX, right? So here we are today just to introduce our friends in the studio. Um, we're under our totally normal studio lighting our lighting behind us, our main front light softbox here. And as you can see, compared to most lights I have, yes, there's haze in the air, but these two lasers, which are each uh, about two watts, this is a two and a half watt, and this is a two watt laser, each of them are shining brilliantly throughout the space. And that's what really sets lasers apart and makes them interesting. And when we're talking to people who are getting interested in lasers, honestly, that's the first thing that we talk to them about. We said, hey, if you've got your stage pretty well covered with lights and you want some extra punch, you can go buy like four more lights or you could just buy a laser. You'll save money, you'll get new effects, you'll get different things, etc. We'll talk more about that in future videos we've talked about in the past, we'll talk about it in the future. It's good stuff. But lasers, okay. So to get started with lasers, there are a lot of misconceptions. Um, you know, lasers can hurt people, um, and they can also hurt pilots, right? If, if it hits their glasses, it scatters, it can blind them, okay? Um, so it's very important that you never shine lasers in skies unterminated, unless you, of course, have been working with the FAA. And number two, make sure it doesn't go in anyone's eyes. And part of that, and part of the daily checklist for a laser, is making sure you're shooting into clear space where no one's going to be. In fact, the, the rules say you need to be three meters or about ten feet above any surface that an audience member can stand upon. Okay? That's really important. Um, but before you even have a laser in your hands, before you get started, um, here in the U.S., uh, the thing you need to get started with lasers is called a variance. Okay, that's like a driver's license. So it's not per show, it's not per event, it's for you or your company to have to be able to use your lasers legally. And when you get your, your variance, you basically agree to use lasers legally. Um, you know, you fill out a bunch of paperwork and that process, while seemingly complicated, and it is kind of complicated, um, is made much simpler through uh, people like X-Laser who have their easy variance program that is very inexpensive, especially when buying a laser. Um, it's included with the laser cubes. And you just fill out a questionnaire online, they file the paperwork, you get your variance, you renew it every year. Nice and simple. Once you have your variance, then it's most important to use your laser safely. So what does that look like? Again, not in skies, not in eyes. Uh, every laser in the U.S. is going to have an emergency stop. This is really important, okay? This means if something happens that's unsafe in the field of the laser, hit the button, right? And then what happens? Well, reset, wait for the status light, hold the button. Now I'm getting my 10-second countdown, and the laser will turn back on once that is completed. Okay, so it's never a bad thing if, if it looks like a potentially dangerous situation, if it looks like someone's headed for the laser beam, etc. Boom. You, the operator, hit that E-stop and you're good to go. Right? Um, emission stops completely. 
Okay. Um, other than that, really, the daily checklist for running lasers is pretty much having a plan, drawing it out as to where the laser is going to go, setting up your safety zones so that you're not hitting cameras, you're not hitting eyes, you're not hitting skies, you're not hitting windows, um, etc. Um, and uh, then you'll you'll go ahead and be able to enjoy your laser. Why use lasers? Well, lasers can do some interesting things. Lasers can be really cool. There's kind of two things you can do with lasers. The one we do in stage work the most is lasers like this, right? We're scanning through the air. We could run all sorts of different patterns here. You know, for example, if I just kind of pop through some different patterns. We're able to get all sorts of different patterns from this laser above us, right? We can also go ahead and get different colors. So here I've got a nice cyan. I can go back. And the cool thing about lasers is this stuff all just transitions smoothly, right? Where I can switch patterns, I can switch colors, I can fade between them. I can have the patterns morph like we're doing right here add-in prisms, etc., and do that all really, really seamlessly, um, all in a package that, um, for this one, this little X-Laser Skyrider, it's literally this big, right? It's like 10 inches by 10 inches by 10 or something like that, sit around there, okay? Um, and the laser cubes are even smaller. So if you're looking at lasers, if you're interested, um, these are a great way to start. So what we've got here is we've got the laser cube 2.5 Wi-Fi from Wicked Lasers. Okay, it's about the middle of their range. Here in the U.S. we get it through X Laser, so it's legal and compliant. And it's a great little laser for a lot of things. One, it's a boatload of fun. You can shine on your wall, you can shine clocks, you can play games. You can also do all these beam effects like this. Now, the laser itself is controlled primarily through a program called Laser OS, which runs on Android, iOS, Mac, or PC. It's a cool program. It can do a lot of great stuff. It's really easy to use. It's not the easiest thing to trigger from external sources like lighting consoles. That's my one caveat, okay? There is an ArtNet mode as well. For the laser cubes, it's fairly basic, so be aware of that. Um, and so what we like to tell people, you know, a lot of times you're looking between these laser cube 2.5s and the X laser 2 watt lasers. Very, very similar brightness as you see here. Um, very similar specifications between the two, okay? Um, the primary differences is that the X laser Skywriter runs their Mercury software as its DMX profile. So it's running DMX. You're controlling it like a light. You saw me there go back here. Hey, I was touching that laser in Onyx. I was working with it. It works just like a light, and it's easy to trigger from lighting consoles. Um, both can be awesome options. You just got to be aware of what their capabilities are, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and then you're able to go from there. So if you've been interested in checking out lasers, what are you waiting for? We've got them over at Learn Stage Lighting Gear, and uh, I would love to know after this video, because we've kept it simple on purpose, um, you know, what more do you want to see about lasers? What more do you want to know about lasers? Um, because like we like to say, it's when you're at the point of adding, you know, two or three more mid-size moving lights to your rig, it might be time to think about going ahead and getting a laser. You can create a really great, really different visual impact on your stage, uh, have fun, and, and do some things that are very different from lighting um, in a very small size, very small truck space. Um, fairly quiet. The laser cubes are quite quiet. The sky riders are a little bit louder. Um, but overall, you know, if you're in spaces of over 500 seats, that's typically not going to be an issue. So if you're interested in more, check them out, Lloyd Stage Lighting Gear. I would love to know in the comments below, what more do you guys want to see about lasers? What can we teach you guys? How can we equip you? Uh, and I know we're going to be covering more and more here on the gear channel and more. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks.